Top Fives, the show of everything Top Fives, presented by the Sex Effects. I'm Joy Prati. And folks, you are in, we're all in for a treat tonight. Um, we have our good friend, Andrew Hopkins, joining us tonight. Um, welcome. Hey, everybody. Thanks, we're, folks. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Uh, we're going to be doing some some music-related lists, and uh, I'm I'm a little giddy. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty excited. So uh, cheers. Cheers. Welcome. This is an old-fashioned. Chai tea. A pilsner. Mm. Mm-hmm. Pill buddy. Ooh. Do you ever have the um, Laughing Monk Brewery? Their pilsner is really good. You know, I've uh, I've seen it's one of the cans that I see all the time, but I haven't had it. It's it. I can't speak for the dark. I I can't really do IPAs anymore, mm-hmm. but I'll speak for their their like lager. It's it's fire. Their pilsner. It's good. Anyway, I anyway. I'm, I agree with you. Uh, not big on IPAs. It's it's too much. It's uh, yeah. it's very very hoppies. Yeah. The it's the nice. only I, like the IPA I've been really digging though, as far as just like recently has been that stone ipa um it's like a tangerine express have you guys ever had that one no Ooh, it's good i know i don't like too much of those flavored beer kind of like it's not overpowering but it's just enough of a hint of citrus in there like a blue moon kind yeah exactly that i think that kind of Ooh. yeah that kind of look or that taste <laughs> Inter- that sounds like it would make me feel like a thousand pounds in like one sip you know, or like <laughs> just just ready for a nap immediately like that's I, so true yeah like if i'm gonna drink a beer i'm probably gonna drink more than one so it's that's why i find it hard to do the ipas but i've been still digging the ciders lately honestly like i like a good beer but man cider's so good what ciders have you been drinking uh i kind of switched it up I, I do the ace pineapple uh cider uh usually it's like apple right it's kind of like the uh cider taste right but pineapple it's just so good i don't know like you think it'd be too much but it's just like good balance of everything so yeah <laughs> very nice very yeah. nice mm-hmm. hops what are you drinking lately you know i um i've liked i used to like bad beer I still like bad beer, but I used to like uh, Budweiser. I would always order a Budweiser because Bud. it was yeah, because it's like it's the same everywhere. And um, but now I've like uh, that's just a bad look, and you can't get it everywhere. <laughs> uh, so I do, I do like um, I like uh, Mexican style uh, lagers. I guess would be like a like a Modelo or a, hey. like I think. Um, Oh, it's called El Scully. I forget who does it. Maybe 21st Amendment. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that one's super good too. Um, yeah, I like, uh, you know, anything that's more, uh, you can see through it. All the, the dark, <laughs> hazy stuff. I just can't do it. Yeah. Although, you know what I have been hankering is a, a Guinness. Like I, oh, I, nice Guinness. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's like some reason, because it's the holidays, I, I equate Guinness being like sweaters. Um, yeah, exactly. And like a, a warm, like a, it's a, it'll warm me up, you know? Totally. Yeah. And uh, so I've been hankering one of those. Ooh. That sounds good. Are we, are we all in Daily City Christmas Eve? Yeah, I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. We're going to get some Guinness well, together. Is that what it is? Should, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. What I'm, that's what I'm think, saying right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Malloy's, here we come. Yeah. So I say visit the old Malloy's. <laughs> yeah. See if that bartender's there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's the like I saw him the next day at Joe's or two days later at Joe's and he looked fucking wrecked. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. No doubt. Oh, Dude, to, get, to get that drunk on duty. Did the do your do your <laughs> listeners know this story? i we may have told it, but please, I don't know. Yes, I, it's such a good story. Uh so we'll, we'll we'll keep it short since we're you know, we're just still in the in the beginning of the show. But um so we on Christmas Eve a couple of years ago, uh, Joey, Joey's brother Matt, and I went to Malloy's, a um, a bar in South San Francisco. And um, when we get in there, um, bartender is drunk, swang, just drunk. And so we go up to the bar, we uh, we order our drinks from him, and he kind of you know he doesn't really acknowledge that we ordered. And then so 
he walks over to kind of to like start making our drinks and then there's this woman at the bar and um i guess they know each other maybe possibly um they she could have worked there but they start talking and then they keep talking and we're still at the bar and then we're kind of talking with each other and we're waiting for our drinks and we're like okay this you know it's a, it's not that packed in there and so we look over and they're full on making out <laughs> full like like do not on duty making out with a random other person like behind the bar and like going at it and so they do this for a while and like a good like a, a long enough while to like should we go um and so <laughs> We kind of look at each other and then he comes over and like, oh, hey, sorry, boys. W what did you guys order? I'm like, OK, dude, like <laughs> don't don't take our order again with a boner now. Like, <laughs> like maybe, maybe, you know, take walk around the block one time, um, take, you know, cool off. Um, but that was a that was a cap to a, a, a great, great Christmas Eve event. Yeah. It's There's some interesting absolutely. stuff that happens in Malloy's, right? Yeah. <laughs> like every time we're there. It's, that, I think that might be the last time I was ever at Malloy's. Um, and it, I feel like it ended on a high. Yeah. How can you um, recreate that? You can, yeah, even the ride <laughs> there, which uh, I don't know if is appropriate to go into right now, but the ride there was fucking nuts. That was nuts, too. Yeah, we'll get um, to that one on, a, on another. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh shit. <laughs> well, um, yeah. What else? I'm always, I'm always a little bit thrown off my game. I never know. Okay, what? what how do we do the show again? Um, so, I, what, what's the next phase? Are we talking? Is there any like pop culture shit we want to like? Oh, man, quickly uh, kind of t go through. I don't know. I don't know. There's nothing yeah, there's not. There's nothing. Yeah, that right now. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. <laughs> got the holidays we had the holidays uh yeah. thanksgiving and all that stuff and then we got christmas coming up so there's a few movies dropping next month right uh um, yeah probably spider-man the matrix resurrections all that stuff that's right, that's right. probably gonna see both you know i movies, but... <laughs> i've only seen i've only seen the first matrix and that was i liked it it's the better one i think of the three but yeah um, I did actually watch with my parents uh, the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die. How did you like that? Uh, it was it was interesting. I mean, like I think it's a good send off for Daniel Craig and his you know his last James Bond film. They make a lot of bold choices in the movie. Uh, I don't know if you've guys seen it yet. No, okay, I don't want to say anything. Um, oh no no no! I, <laughs> I <was laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm not going. I probably won't. It's it's my friend spoiled it for me. I asked him to. It's not like he. I was like fuck, <laughs> but it is pretty fucking big. So oh, okay. I, I okay. it's okay. pretty fucking huge. Um, if you're okay with that, Shawnee, take it away. Uh, spoiler alert! If you haven't seen No yeah. Time to Die, anyone watching, fast, fast forward plug. to this point in the <laughs> yeah, fast forward another <laughs> minute or two. Uh, Although, Hops, do you do you want to hear? Or do you not want to hear? No, I do want to hear. I do want to. Okay, cool, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, they pretty much kill James Bond in the film. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And they kind of, they establish the 007 obviously is, is the code name mm -hmm. and they actually leave, uh, this, uh, female agent, uh, in his place to as well. Um, so yeah, they kill James Bond. They kill Daniel Craig in the movie. Wow. Well, yeah. Was it a good send? I mean, did it, did they do it in a way that like James Bond would have died? Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like, sac but it was like sacrificial, like, all right, oh. there's no turning back from here kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. but you're, you're spending the whole movie like, you know, you you don't have any hints of like, uh, of him like dying or like making this big sacrifice, I would say, at the end. So uh, it does come out of nowhere for sure. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's like, you know, how are they going to end this like franchise with Daniel Craig? And from what from I know, like most of the James Bond films, like with the other people who have played him, they don't really like just kill him off or like they kind of just tell the Never. tell yeah. tell that entry of the story, and then they you know a couple years go by and they have a new person as like James Bond. That's usually what happens, right? So there there was never any like hard continuity like there is with the Daniel Craig movies. Like his Bond yeah. is yeah. And there's some cool like Easter eggs and obviously continuity from like the earlier movies. And they have uh what's his name um Jeremy Wright Chris. the is it Jeremy Wright? Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Uh, who played uh, oh. the CIA, you know, 
guy he befriended in the first film. So there's like Felix, right? Felix, yes, yeah. So that's cool. They bring back some of those characters, and then he has like that um, a callback to uh, uh, Vespa, the like the girl in the first movie in Casino Royale. So because he was like so in love with that girl, so. <laughs> Um, Hell yeah! But yeah, I, it's a bold move. I was when I when I was sitting there with my parents and my, especially my dad's a huge J, James Bond fan. I'm just like, damn, they really did that. They really freaking killed him, dude. <laughs> like, I like that your dad's a big James Bond fan. Of course, <laughs> Double O Mike Day. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Double O Seven baby. <laughs> Double O Seven <laughs> bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Dad, I hope you're watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's uh, the latest thing I kind of saw and, you know, had Thanksgiving with my fam and everything like that. So it's cool. But I'm coming back in December and uh, Andrew, I uh, didn't get a chance to reach out to you guys um, and just uh, have a f- enough time. But we should definitely do some more Blind Issues recordings. And I guess we could use this time to say check out Deep and Meaningful, the uh, yeah. two song EP from Blind Issues that all three of us have uh released <laughs> together and my brother Simon yeah. too under blind issues so check it out yeah it's <laughs> a lot of blood sweat and other bodily fluids in the making of that so yeah <laughs> and was, it sounds good it's like a professional i mean it, it's okay that, that that makes it that makes it sound like amateurs but <laughs> yeah. i mean like it, it legitimately sounds great you know like uh you wouldn't guess who's in a garage no you no you yeah wouldn't, yeah or yeah <laughs> You wouldn't have guessed anything about it. To be yeah. 100% honest with you. And you wouldn't it's have great. you wouldn't have guessed that we recorded one of the songs in like 2014 and the other one last November, which was we reached our our anniversary I think from the recording of that that album. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh super cool, man. So I'm I'm excited to work on obviously more music uh and Joey and I we talked uh when I was up up there uh for Thanksgiving. We're like, "Yo, what songs should we like bring back?" from our old catalog, I would say, kind of revitalize them. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> this feels like a fairly decent segue um, into, uh, you know, the 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 reason, I, you know, Sean, you had a, an idea for a list, and I was like, oh, we better hit up Pops for this. So, uh, Jonathan, do you want to, not putting you on the spot, but would you like to take it away? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Or should we do um, our other one first? Ooh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like this one could go, go pretty, pretty smoothly. Um, fair, 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 fair. I mean, yeah, we're celebrating deep and meaningful. We have Andron, who's a part of Blind Issues. Uh, we have had actually uh, Andrew Guest appear in a few episodes, and we also had a Blind Issues episode with my brother True. too as well. Um, but anyways, uh, the topic for tonight is, uh, yeah, what are like your top five? favorite things about being in a band and yeah i mean i was just thinking about being in a band and like what's that's like and uh yeah what are the like things you love about it um and experiences that come with it so take it away (laughs) um how do do we want to go like one 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 or do we want to do one through five Ooh, andrew you you pick you want to do let's do i think let's do one 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 because I think okay. uh, I think we'll all have like good input on what we'll what we'll say um, yeah. after we kind of reveal what our what ours are. That sounds good. <laughs> cool. Pops, would you like to would you like to kick us off? I would love to. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I am starting from um, I'm doing linear time. So I'm starting from the beginning. And one of my favorite things um, to do as a band is sound check. Um, I think there is something so fun about getting there early in your non-show clothes, running through (laughs) a couple songs, impressing the bartender, and then, um, just being like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's Let's bring it on. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so sound check is my, uh, is my first one off the board. I love that. I love that. Hell Yeah. Cause it's um, like, and you get sometimes you get to sound check a song you're not playing during the set, or like your favorite song, or you know, I don't know. There's a lot of cool stuff that can happen during sound check. A whole we've bunch had of cool moments. Stuff. We've had moments where like this is going in the set, and then we tried it sound check, and we go, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we didn't know that one too well. <laughs> yeah, that's super true. Or we'll, we'll do. Uh, you remember 
when we played up in Chico and we had a, we did spin me right round. Oh, we had a dude, friend of ours sing it, and we, yeah. had to, we had to run through that it sound check and, and uh, you know do that all all pretty quick. That's you know you you get stuff like that, and then I think that's like the fun the fun aspect of of sound check. Yeah, that's awesome. I wouldn't have even thought of that, but that's yeah, that's awesome. Sound check, dude. Sound check. Love it. <laughs> Love um, it or leave it. <laughs> Love um, it. <laughs> All right. Um, Sean, I'll go next so you get to have the, the finale since was, this was your list, sir. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. Um, number five for me, I'm going to say experimentation with each other, but also in the studio. <laughs> um, you know, like creating a song like and just kind of hitting that wall where you're either tired or you're inspired or whatever. And you can bring in sounds from anywhere. Um, and just kind of and play with the instruments in a way. Like, remember when we were recording, um, I think it was Unjust or something, and they're like, do the pick really fast up past the nut and where the strings, you know, um, on the head. And so it gets this really shrill kind of high pitch thing and never would have thought to do that. But it's like, we had the time to listen to it and sit with it and go, okay, this is where it could go in the song, which isn't something you can do when you're rehearsing. You know, um, so yeah, I don't know. That that shit's always fun to me. The experimentation of it all. Yeah, yeah, dude. Especially when you have like you've written the song and you're kind of we're you know thinking about like studio time with Blind Issues, the early days of Blind Issues. Like, yeah, having like Colin and Jordan was it Jordan? Yeah. Jordan Tag. <laughs> yeah. Jordan Tag. Like even them, like be, you know, kind of uh, guiding us through the process, but also like being open to like yeah we should try this thing you know this kind of thing or uh did you know try to get a different sound or tone out of the amplifier Mm -hmm. i always remember kind of going back to that those sessions like i remember we were like swinging like a microphone across like a guitar cab or something yeah and it's creating this like really cool uh kind of spinning like that kind of um the wah 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 yeah that kind of tremolo sound so i just thought that was super cool and um yeah, you have to have those moments, right? Because, you know, you're sitting there, you have the song kind of there and you kind of have an idea of what it's going to sound like when you record it. But all those little, like, magic moments in between kind of add so much more. So, yeah. 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 That's so true. Another <laughs> another good one that we uh, that we did during those sessions was we recorded one of, one of your guitar parts, Joey, through your small amp through the little yes, like yeah. the little tiny marshall <laughs> yeah that was the great yeah. yeah yeah i think we so used, much fun uh we used a stand-up bass for one of the songs because they just had, yeah. They had it yeah. yeah you know stuff like that so stuff cool. like yeah i think we did not to get off super off topic but i think we did uh-huh. way more experimentation pardon me way more experimentation uh in the in the sisyphus studios than we ever did at uh expressions where like oh yeah teaching, like different yeah. techniques and, and stuff like that i you know i just think it's funny that when you're not in the in the realm of like a, a learning you know almost like a you know you're like being supervised when you can just like be yourself be whatever just be like two you know <laughs> like four dumb idiots talking with other two dumber <laughs> yeah. idiots about like <laughs> different things to do in music um and there's, there's like a, a je ne sais quoi about je that. Sais quoi. No, I mean, I don't, can you, I can remember the uh, the space so well. I mean, it, I didn't realize it at the time that it was like, oh, this is just some dude's apartment that he's turned into a studio, you know, but like, I can kind of almost remember the smell of that fucking place. And yeah. like, we spent, I, we'll get into it later, but like the, the whole sitting around aspect of being at the studio is, it's boring, but it's also kind of exhilarating at the same time because you're at a fucking studio, you know what I mean? But you're not, I don't know. It's its such a weird kind of hurry up and wait kind of thing. But That's a, that's a good observation because it, it, there's, no, there's no other instance where I would, I would get pumped to sit around for four hours and just like yeah. watch like my buddies play music. It, like it, there's, there's no other place you can, you can do that. And, and still, I guess, put your input in where you, you kind of feel you're noticed a little bit, even though, you know, you may not be like, all, you may not be the person who's like, you know, recording right now, but you can, you still have input and you can still like kind of have your creative way with, 
whatever you want to get into. Yeah. yeah, everyone has like a direction. They're kind of like, all right, cool. Very fucking cool. Um, Shawnee? Uh, number five? Um, I've got sharing like musical influences with like your bandmates and with each other. Like, I think that's like kind of where the band like where you stem from as far as like what you're writing and like what you're making, you know, with each other. Um, you know, at the time, you know, blind issues, we were listening to a lot of blink One Eight Two, uh, like green day, all the pop, like pop, pop punk bands, uh, you know, joy, you went through your Ramones and Nirvana and like, you know, that rubbed off on all of us. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I, I get stuck on one band at a time for about eight years. And then yeah. I move on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's great because it, it's like everyone, you know, everyone has something, you know, everyone comes from so many different musical backgrounds and like what they listen to growing up, either from like our parents or, you know, what we hear at like school or wherever we're at. And then with our friends and like, you know, our band is was a bunch of friends including my brother who's my brother but like it was a bunch of us together you know listening to all this music and like trying to figure out like how can we make music like this and um you could tell like the influences we had in the earlier days i said you know with blind issues and it still sticks to this day when i hear like the two songs we just released i was like man yeah this like but it's a it's a culmination of the stuff we've been you know really listening to and all the songs we've written over the years. So it's, I think that's what my favorite part about it is like getting to know other, other musical influences from everyone else. Cause uh, it's important. You, you have your background and your, what you listen to, what you like and um, your, your, the people you aspire to like musician wise, like um, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> like similar points of reference and, and that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and it dictates like where your songs go you know like if you know you know if you if like there's so many interludes where we're like well what would blink 182 do yeah <laughs> get that palm muting going yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> and like we're on the same page so we kind of like know and you could you could tell when we when we play um because we know each other um and this kind of goes into like our influences being the same where we could kind of get off a little bit like be you know kind of off time or something like that but still kind of snap together or be like you know get to the on one at the same time because you kind of know we can the feel of who we are as musicians and who we who we idolized growing up and who we like played after we know where we're gonna go and when we're gonna do it yeah yeah <laughs> that is Ooh. i mean yeah there's been moments on stage where we all give each other a look and it's just like all right <laughs> this is what we're doing mm. nice. cool so number two for me and so i guess it's number four right um so keeping with the um keeping with like the the feel of kind of like a show and like things that we it's, it's cool um playing other people's instruments is something that <laughs> i i think yeah. like in practice at a show, like it's always kind of cool to play somebody else's instrument, um, play through somebody else's amp. Like, I think that's always kind of cool. Like, um, you know, it could be more of like, um, a thing where I don't have that pedal. I would like to use that pedal. And so I get to use that pedal or it could be something where, you know, we've stopped down at practice and I want to get on Simon's drum kit and I want to play drums. A <laughs> <Yeah. bit. laughs> and that's always super cool. And, uh, you know, you never have like the time to do it. And uh, I think like just like band practice in itself or, you know, just like screwing around before a gig, you get to do so many um, just things you wouldn't be able to do. The confidence you have, the like the kind of the 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 feeling that you get from everybody else. You kind of you you perform better when you're on somebody else's um, instrument or you're, you know, you're playing somebody else's you know kit or something like that. Um, that's something I always like doing. I love yeah. that. You're almost you're almost like acting be more well behaved because you're with you know someone else's <laughs> piece and i think you know the audience gets a little bit of a thrill out of it too especially if you change mid-show like when you and i would switch guitar and bass for like damn it or something like that's or watching fucking uh operation hooligan when the brother would stand behind him and play the bass or whatever <laughs> that was so cool do you know how cool so, that was that was so <laughs> fucking cool 
I've never seen that before. I Ever. loved it. And they were yeah. doing it at boys and girls clubs. Like that was so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. And like with like fingerless mittens on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and like do that? when when oh, tight, when the only tight pants you could get were girls' pants. So there was like yeah. you were wearing straight yes. up, like no pockets on the butt, girls' pants. Yes. Studded belt. Mm. Oh man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. God, what a the early two thousands were a vibe. Oh, that was a weird time. Yeah. <laughs> it's so and then I look back on it and like I wanted to be those people so bad. And so I bad. Was so bad. <laughs> and it's so embarrassing now. It's like, yeah. Anyway. I'm just I mean, glad my MySpace was deleted. At the time. <laughs> I <know>. um, <laughs> I <know. laughs> um I love that though. I think that's yeah. Um, number four I'm going to go with after you've laid down the track hearing it back not necessarily for the first time but I mean like when we get like a finished anything back it doesn't matter what stage it's in I have never ever lost that feeling of holy shit it's us coming through the speaker mm -hmm. to this day I listened to us on the way to work today just because I was like I can't believe we are coming out of the speaker and we sound like that <laughs> not to like do that or anything but it sounds fucking good um you know what i mean like it's just i'll never get tired of that um and it's not even a thing where it's like i want other people to listen to it i mean yes of course i want everyone to listen, but i'm never going to be like hey check this out but just personally i'm just like that's so fucking cool it's not even that like i don't know it's just as a especially as a kid when you think if you're in a band, you're automatically famous. That was my thought. Mm -hmm. I remember my, I was like at a record store as a kid and my mom mentioned how one of her friend's brothers was in a band. I was like, is he famous? She's like, no. I'm like, but how did that work? Because if, <laughs> if you're in a band, you're famous. Um, only famous people do that. You know, so like to kind of, and then at, you know, 14 or 15 years old to be able to hear yourself coming through a speaker with pretty damn good quality. It's not like we were just you know, we have those little MP3 demos, but I mean, we were in a studio and getting a quality shit. That's, I'll never get over that. I'll never get over that feeling. It's so exciting. It's so fucking exciting. Dude, That's even, a good one. even hearing like the rough demos, like even if we didn't mm -hmm. release it yet, like I think just like that first few stages of like, dude, we got this like CD. We, 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 like, we were getting those things on CDs and they would, we put it in God. our cars and stuff and like listen back and, and then it's like, oh my God, this is like where the song's at. And we, we did this to like today or like we, you know, it's hearing that back and um, it is, yeah, it's super gratifying. Like it's so much fun to hear it back. And I think, uh, yeah, if you're like a band starting out or at that early stage where you have your first recording, I think it's like the, the coolest like experience to hear that back. And yeah. I was listening to Deep and Meaningful today as well. So I was like, I was like, oh my god, we have some music on Spotify now. Check it out. Not only that, it's you can you can uh, you can do your little TikTok dances to our music too. So like, yeah, it's all over the place. You know? It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, gotta make it TikTok famous. I guess. Yeah. Can we? What's the thing? Like, oh, it's a trend on TikTok, or is it trending? Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's yeah. make a trend on TikTok. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> i don't know either like i guess I you know what you, you know what the, the i don't know i think everyone it, it, like t i'm i don't know tiktok is a very like addicting thing but um the i think the way to get like get views is to um like do something sad like if you cry like if, if you like cry over music i think that like that plays super well and people like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like it was like a, a train wreck. I really felt just, this. Yeah. It, well, not only that, it's like the the people who you don't know and like you don't you only know like their side of the story. You're like immediately like I'm here for you if you need anything. I will be here for you. It's like bro, they just they recorded themselves crying. I'm like that's weird <laughs> if you think about it. Like they were like oh, I'm gonna cry, and then they would set up their thing. And then they kind of like go and then they do the thing where they're like they gotta go up to the camera to like press it you know <laughs> people who aren't editing that out like come on it's authentic come on it's real. jesus christ <laughs> meanwhile they just came in from hacking a person apart like in a field or something <laughs> i just feel so much uh <laughs>
Oh, uh, TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Yes. <sighs> All right. Shawnee, oh, what's your It's what's my your turn. <laughs> it's like your turn. Uh, number four, uh, I have making friends with other bands uh, when you would play uh-huh. shows. And speaking of like, uh, you know, op- uh, like Onslaught. Remember Danny uh, Rodriguez's yeah. band? Yes. Yeah, Later with was, our blood. With our blood was yeah, um, yeah. I think that's the the, the like my uh, Parkway what was it Parkway fifty fifty five one fifty one fifty one oh okay yeah um, yeah. I think that's like my, one of my favorite parts about being in, in a band is like meeting other bands and just like yeah. uh, hearing their music obviously and you know kind of uh, and depending on you know sometimes you open for a band sometimes you play headline or in the middle so it's kind of cool if, you know depending on what you know, the bill is or what, you know, what you're playing, like you get to meet bands that, you know, maybe have been playing for years or are just starting out just like you or whatever. So I think that's like kind of the coolest part. It, and then, and then if, if you get lucky, you, you become friends with the band and you're, you're like, yo, let's just like play a show together. And then you start that whole thing where like, you know, you play shows in the area together and you know, I don't know. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I totally I, agree. Yeah. It's so much fun. And then, yeah, getting to, like, geek out on some other people's music. And and then if they have, you know, um, if they support your band, too, and you guys can kind of support each other as fans and maybe get gather fans together. So it's a, it's a win-win, and I think it's uh, one of my favorite parts. And you get to meet other, you know, musicians and, and people that, you know, also play music. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a real yeah. sense of uh, community. You know, especially like those Pacifica shows and everything. It was like, oh, we're seeing the same faces all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's super true. Do you remember there was, so we would, we would play on a lot of bills that were like, it would be a pop punk band and then it'd be like a, an emo band. Then it'd be like super like grindcore, hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'd like end up with like a screamo band or whatever. I remember one time <laughs> there was a band named Goddamn. And uh, for whatever reason, their drummer just did this like that. Nobody started playing. Nobody played. And their drummer just started like going. And everyone in the room just started to like move closer and closer to the stage. And like no, nobody told them to do it. It was just they were there was the gravitational pull of this dude's drumming brought the whole room closer to him. And I've never seen anything like it. And I, I, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And it was just a band named Goddamn. <laughs> and I don't know where they are. I don't know what they. Who knows if they even recorded music? But Damn, this drummer did sick. something where I've never that? seen. That was at the Pacifica Boys and Girls Club. God damn! All right, front room or back? It, it, it was the front room. The, the front, front room, room was with, yeah, better. with the like the kitchen behind it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that front room. Yeah. Oh man, those shows, dude. <laughs> that was great. Those shows were great. That's a that's a good one, Sean. Um, I like that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, number. So for me, so I think we talked about this like a little, a little before, but, um, there's something very specific to being in a band and, um, and it's when, and it's when we all screw up, but we're the only ones that know we screw up and we all kind of look at each other and give us that like knowing nod, like, yeah, we got, we, we screwed up. And then, like, we all, we all just kind of laugh. It's if it's the drummer, we all just kind of like that. We do the move where we're all playing and then we, yeah. mm. <laughs> you're totally right. It's never, it's never negative. It's, it's yeah. usually just like, Hey, I, d- I know you did yeah. something there. Yeah, and it's a, it's always a smile. And yeah. uh, my, I was it, funny enough. I was talking about this with my my uncle Jeff, who plays in bands um, at Thanksgiving, and he was like, "Whenever you see a band having the time of their life, somebody just fucked up majorly. Like somebody <laughs> yeah. like made a big screw up." Um, and I like that's super true. Like I think one of the one of the more fun times I've ever had is when it, super early on I did a jump and my strap broke. <laughs> And then Dude, I had to play the rest yeah. of the talent show sitting on on the base. And then there was another show where we were in Monterey, I think, where it happened to Joey. And I think that one's in the the Loca Tress video where like the same thing happened. And it's just yeah, like the funniest yeah. thing ever. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> yep. what can you do? You know, what can you do? Oh, man. Uh, I don't do. There was a show one time at OLM where like we got off on the wrong start like the first song in we got out of time and we never recovered it 
No. And like, <laughs> it was like the worst show ever played. And I'll never forget, like, we had like two or three or four songs left. We would play 20 songs in 45 minutes back then. But like, yeah. You and me kind of just came in close to each other. You're like, you want to end it now? Yep. Okay. <laughs> like, all right, this is our last one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> damn. Yeah, I don't. You, I'm sure there was a lot of those. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It's fun fucking <laughs> up. It's fun fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. Especially, well, you know, when you get to a point where you're not doing it too often. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that what makes it fun is when you when it's not normal. Because I think like yeah. what the reason it's so funny when we do it is because like we're usually, you know, I, this is going to sound like very very like pat yourself on the back, but we're you're pretty solid. Like we're we're yeah we're tight. You know we're a tight band, and so when we do screw up, it's like it's a, it's a thing. Like, we definitely <laughs> yeah. like we know it. And uh, in the early days, Sean would always walk. It's the only time Sean would ever go up to the microphone. Sorry guys, I I missed a chord on that one. We're, dude, yeah. <laughs> don't. Don't say anything. They didn't know. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't know. They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great. That's a good one, though. Andrew. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I would say kind of similar to that. Mine would be just the kind of uh, brotherhood that you kind of get being in a band. You know, it's almost like a gang mentality. Like it's four of us against the fucking world. Mm-hmm. Um, and even people who are close to us still aren't really they're not us you know what i mean they're 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 around the circle they're not in it um and there's something really special and kind of powerful and 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 comforting um you know that it was just kind of like all right this is you know even it's like a family you know what i mean even we've gone through all the different emotions um being having friendships that have lasted over 30 years right like we're, we're not always going to like each other. We're not always going to, you know, be on the same page for everything, but we're always going to have each other's backs. We're always going to love each other. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of that, that, and you, I think, especially with us having been playing together nearly 20 years now, you, you see it, you see it come across, you know what I mean? You, you can hear it, you can feel it. And um, I'm just so fucking thankful for, for that. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a very special thing that uh, I, people who aren't in it can't they just can't understand it so you know i love are. that one. Oh, that was beautiful thank you joey yeah yeah that's nice dude <laughs> it's true it's a very true i've always <laughs> i've always said you know i don't i can't tell you what feels better sex or playing live um <laughs> Two different, completely different feelings, but the synchronicity that you feel during it—you know what I mean? Like the, like it's it's it's, it's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, it's it's one of those things where like it can either when it's when it's happening, it feels like there's been no time lost at all, yeah. and when it's over, you think like shit, I wish I could have done that forever. You know what I mean? And, like, and I need a towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We and and at both we need alone time in the bathroom afterwards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've brought changes of T-shirts to our last few shows, and it's like someone always walks in on me while I'm just these, you know, crummy bar bathrooms where it's like no doors or anything and i'm just like there with my shirt off trying to trying to get it off it's it won't come off because i'm sticky yeah. <laughs> someone always walks in and goes, oh uh are you the uh mm-hmm. <laughs> it's me <laughs> it's me it's me check it but, out yeah. <laughs> yeah. that is my number three that's a good one man beautiful and all the heartstrings dude right there it's true. All right, guys. My number three is is kind of similar to what Andrew was talking about earlier, but uh, yeah, like studio, being in the studio, and uh, you know, like we've had obviously early blind issues, uh, some of our first studio sessions ever, um, which you know, I think those early sessions really, even for me, kicked off like my love for like producing music and you know, and and helping produce the two songs we just released and and. Um, getting excited to create music 
with uh with blind issues and everything so um yeah being in a studio just like we were saying earlier like the environment is so free and open and there's just something about being in like that kind of environment that like allows you to be creative and um experimental and all that kind of stuff so and it's it's great and then if you you know it, every studio is different and you know um I would, you know, we've been to a few, like we were saying, like uh, Sisyphus and Expressions, New Media. Um, I've been to a few s- studios myself, like, and it's just, it's cool. It's like every place is different and has a different mm-hmm. vibe. And, like, uh, it, it's, uh, it can give off a different feeling uh, when you're there and how you kind of approach the rest of the session. Um, the Whoever's there engineering, whoever's kind of working there is a whole thing. And so, oh, hello, cat. <laughs> oh, oh sick. He likes to just jump up there <laughs> and hang around. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. And uh, yeah, for for being in a for a band, being in a studio, and like it's funny. Like I've been I've been uh, engineering a few sessions in the past where, you know, I would have like young bands come in or these dudes have never uh, recorded music ever, and it's such a like fascinating and I I, I take more. Uh, pleasure out of, of doing those sessions because it's just like yo this reminds me of like when we were playing and recording for the first time and that feeling of like again like knowing you know being so you know so uh, ready to get the music out and and try different things and being so excited to like get get the the actual song you know recorded and, and you can hear it back and um, and then trying new things and I it's funny like I've, I feel like those earlier moments of us in the studio like really translated to like how I approach music production now and um and I do miss like yeah working with bands that like have you know done their first few recordings or um bands that are uh that kind of they make me think of like blind issues and that you know how we how we kind of started you know making music and everything so yeah the studio life and you know hopefully someday I will have a place, a studio, and we can all <laughs> come in and bang on some drums <laughs> and <laughs> make some music. So, but yeah, man, studio is the studio life. Love that. Yeah. 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 What, uh, have you recorded like a lot of people like recording for the first time? Uh, not a lot, <laughs> but I've, rec- the, the most I've done as far it's been like bands, like mm-hmm. mostly uh, they're getting like the first like demo done or uh, maybe they did do like a, maybe they had like a recording they did like a home recording or maybe they had someone else try to do it. Um, it's all, it all varies, but I think that those are the funnest sessions. Like I'm it's great. Mad. Yeah. It's, it's great to like obviously work with people who are, um, I guess like have been doing it for a while. Cause of course they, you know, you kind of know what to expect and you know, they're obviously they're organized and you know, <laughs> like they, yeah. they know their shit. So, yeah. but it's also like, it's great to have like, you know, um, like I recorded this band, they were called cancerous state cancerous with a K Stick. and state state. <laughs> yeah. With a K and then state and as with an, an eight. <laughs> it's like, it kind of, it was like S T A I T or something like that. Like, spelled differently but they were like they just reminded me so much of like us in the studio the early days and like and then yeah just being like you know they're just like dude you're a wizard like i can't believe you made this guitar sound like this and um and i and i i was so encouraging of like you know even they're you know they were giving so much input and uh you know can we try it you know let's just try this this uh pedal and like you know boost it up here and i was like yeah let's do it like you know um it, the environment tr- you know you try to set the environment for for and that's kind of like the weird like i i've become on the other end as far as like producing and stuff and i haven't really recorded a bunch of bands recently um but it, it is great to like see that moment where i i honestly was like i mean with that same band i remember the guitar player he was rocking out so hard like he wanted he wanted to head bang and stuff when he was playing the guitar i had to tape the headphones to his his uh head because <laughs> like <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I, you know, it's like I, you know, I could have been the like, man, you're gonna break like the equipment. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, you could be like that kind of person, but I was just like, dude, this is gonna be so much fun for this person yeah. because they're gonna have, they're gonna just, they're because they're just so in into the music and 
and it's great to see that and it, it translates so well to when it when you record and and get the song you know out so yeah studio time studio life and just yeah being fun and experimental in the studio it's oh, a yeah. great anecdote i uh, i love that that you act, that you get to see people have that kind of fun the fun that we used to have you know, you know we'll still still have the fun yeah. that we have oh yeah it's it's you know. it's the coolest feeling and yeah it it stems from a lot of the early stuff we did and you know seeing like Colin and those guys do the crazy experimental stuff and yeah yeah hmm. hell yeah awesome dude I like that <laughs> I like that uh, number number two for me um so this is something that it's kind of it's uh it's it's exclusive to shows, but I think it's um, something that we can all kind of agree that it feels fucking really good. Um, it's getting a laugh when you didn't expect to get a laugh. Like you just say something to somebody and then people laugh at it when you're like, oh, OK. And like it's, <laughs> we're here to play music, but you're laughing at something that I said. I now feel way better about myself. And um, <laughs> yeah. that's you know, those are like little gems that you can never you can never put a price on and um, you always want more of it. So that is getting getting laughs on stage. That's really good. That's really that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's like because you know you know we had a lot of friends and family like come out to our shows and I we definitely appreciate all their support. But it's great to see like random people like enjoying yeah. the music and la- you know yeah of course laughing at something that you intended to be funny. But yeah. I think I I I remember uh, the the winter show we played, which I think was like literally um, in. I think we played in December. Did we play in December? December twenty second. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Something like that. Of twenty nineteen. Nineteen, right? It was like just before all the pandemic the pandemic stuff. I think you just like was like, hey, all these songs are pretty much uh, our band. We wrote all these songs when we were in high school, and I, I, like I think you were just trying to be like, just kind of being just really honest on stage, uh, Joey, and and yeah, I got a little chuckle because yeah, it's like some people were there, and I was just, they probably don't know who we are, and like they were laughing because they're like, we can tell yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> songs about teenage angst. No, I I just think that's that's a that is kind of a funny little tagline. Like, you know, if it plays some more shows, be like, yeah. well, this song we wrote in high school, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And I feel the same way. Yeah. <laughs> My opinion's never not changed at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Growth? What's that? Yeah. What's that? What's that? Uh, I love that. Yeah. Getting a laugh. Absolutely. Number two for me is very broad. We've already kind of talked about it, but just collaborating on a song. Um, you know, whether it was, you know, I remember different like variations of like, you know, Andrew and Simon breaking off to figure out the bass and drums, then you guys show us to us later and we'd be working on the lyrics or what have you know. Um, but my favorite, especially this last time with Circus Witch was, you know, here I've got this, the first gem or you're not gem, uh, the first seed of an idea or whatever. And then, you know, it was, it could have been this very simple, a fair time ripoff kind of thing. And then Andrew's like, what if we did it like dun, 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 instead of dun, 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 you know? And it was like, it changed the entire feeling of it. And then Sean was like, well, let me throw in a fucking solo. And Simon did his thing. And it, it in my head, it never sounded that good. You know what I mean? And it wouldn't have ever sounded that good if it if I was just left to my own devices. And, um, you know, the first time I remember really feeling that was, uh, this always happens when you brought that bass line in. And then over, I mean, I don't think we did it in one day. It was over a few weeks. We just kept kind of, hey, what if we tried this? You know, and we just kept adding to it. And it's one of the most, I think, complex, I don't know if you would call it compositions or what have you that we have, but it's, you know, there's so many different moving pieces and we were just completely open with each other to trying things and, uh, you know, not being like, no, you know, it's, it's just everyone is like, okay, cool. Throw in that idea. How do we make it work? Boom. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's, I love that so much. And, you, you know, a lot of that comes into the studio, but a lot of it happens before that too. So, so, so many hours in my parents' garage. <laughs> like Every Sunday. Every, yeah. Yeah. Sunday service. We too. were so religious about that. 
I mean, we probably was, like we probably banked multiple hundreds of hours of oh uh, yeah, playing dude. music together. Thinking, yeah, I thinking mean, about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we said we can go years, and we have gone years without playing with each other, and then we get back, and it's boom, we're <laughs> we're back. Um, you know, that's you can't. I don't care how good you are. That's fucking muscle memory. That is all those hundreds of hours in that garage. That's so true. It takes like one affair time and then we're, we're mm-hmm. back in. Yeah. You know? yeah. Wind up the, yeah. Uh... yeah. <laughs> you gotta get one bit. disappointing number in and then a fair time. And then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love those moments too. Cause it's like, we all look at each other. And we're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just a... <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, think, so I think we got this <laughs> like <laughs> uh joey my my number two is kind of is pretty much the same thing is the 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 like songwriting process uh yeah. us just sitting in the garage uh i mean it start it all starts with us playing covers and like learning songs and then you know one of us has an idea and then you know, a riff or something like that um, it's the, the collaborative effort. Um, and that again, yeah, kind of going off of, uh, the circus, Witch and some of the, the last songs we recorded, it has been like that. I think that's my favorite part about it. You know, I think, um, that way of, uh, collaborating on music is so good. Cause it's like, yeah, we all have something to bring and, and, you know, everyone has different thoughts and perspectives and, um, it's, it's so much fun to like, like I, I, I can always never see songwriting not being a collaborative thing. Like, um, you know, you could, you could release your own music or whatever and do your own thing. But like, honestly, the, the, the best music, um, and the best songwriting I feel is when you're collaborating with other people. And like, it's been so cool to see the, even the process of us, um, you know, changing different things about how we collaborate with each other is super cool. Like even like, I guess for me, like living in Los Angeles and you guys up in the Bay, you know, that was a, obviously a big change as far as like being able to like, you know, I have to send you guys stuff and you're li- we're listening back. And um, and then, you know, of course, you know, doing those come back home and making those practices work and and, you know, doing some recordings and stuff. So uh, it's uh, it's probably one of my favorite parts about music, uh, especially creating it. And um, yeah, especially being in a band, man, getting to hear, you know, hear everyone's ideas and um and then getting this like you had an idea and you know andrew might have a different way of playing it or going back to kind of switching the instruments thing sometimes like yeah we would have a moment where maybe andrew might hop on guitar real quick and be like play like this or you know or and then you know my brother you know my brother's you know as a as the drummer it's great because you know he's so open and has is such you know a swiss army knife for all sorts of different things and grooves and stuff um, but he could still in, in go and look at the stuff we've were presented and, and interpret it and make his own, you know, find a way to to create like the, you know, the the groove behind it. So I don't know. I'm actually really I'm getting really excited for like the next few. Like, you know, yeah. we've talked about, I think, um, getting together, maybe like renting a spot and just like <laughs> that's all we do for a few days or something. Um, but I think that's going to be I'm excited for that, like more of that um, being able to like create more all that so yeah yeah hell yeah i love it love it love it i can't wait i can't I know wait. me too mm, okay <laughs> sorry what were you gonna say no no <laughs> okay uh i'm ramping up for my number one um uh, my number one is very specific um because it's something that it's hard to explain but um and it's like very specific to like where we're at right now and it's like we all have you know careers away from like what we're doing like like music I'm, you know what i mean like we have careers away from like what we're creatively doing and so when you're able to drop to somebody who they think that you're just some like stick in the mud like you know like nobody like oh yeah no no, no. um what are you doing this weekend oh my band's playing a show i'm like oh you're in a band like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, man. no. What kind of music do you play? I'm like, oh, no, you know, you just play, you don't want to blah, 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 blah. How long have you been playing? Oh, like 15, 20 years. And then that's when they're like, what? You, what the, really? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, dude, like we put out, we were, we were on iTunes, like we played all the, you know, and like we, then you get to kind of like run down your, your, uh, 
your resume in a very like, oh no, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I just happened to do this now. You know, I was like, I just, um, I think that's something that's like super uh, specific to like us or like, you know, just like smaller musicians in general, just, you know, being able to like have a hobby that's like creative, but being able to drop that on somebody that's like not in, um, you know, not in the space. It's very, very fun and fulfilling and it makes me feel very good. I love that. I couldn't agree yeah. more. It's a good eyebrow razor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're right. Especially Absolutely. especially when it's not in that like circle of like, you know, maybe bands or musicians like, you know, I think that's super cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm, I'm in a band. <laughs> Check us out. <laughs> forget about it. No, don't forget about it. <laughs> Here's a flyer so you don't forget about it. <laughs> I love that. Joe. I, I had um, a coworker once after they came and saw us play at the uh, Jewish Community Center. We were at the, a battle of the bands there. Uh, he goes, your personality finally makes sense to me. I was like, right on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's um, fine. Oh, Joe. Number one is very broad, but I mean, I think everything kind of leads to playing live. There's no other, you know, I go back and forth all the time in my head, what's better playing live or being in the studio. And I, uh, adrenaline wise, it's, it's fucking playing live. You know what I mean? You have a good show. You're having a good week, Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, it's, it's, you kind of feel on invincible almost, you know, um, you get to feel like, oh yeah, I'm in a band, so I'm famous um, like, for like for like a night, you know. It's um, but uh, but it's more than that. It's that connection between the four of us that I was talking about earlier. That you know, um, most people only get that during fucking sex. You know what I mean? But we get to have it with four of us and for <laughs> for sometimes 45 minutes and <laughs> you know it's when we're firing on all cylinders we're all playing what we're supposed to be playing at the right time and you there's no other feeling like it we we you exist in there i don't know if you ever seen the movie forces of nature it's fucking terrible but um ben affleck talks about like oh i believe when i'm in you know with the one that there's like a bubble around us and and you know like there's a storm going on but it can't it doesn't it keeps going around their little bubble because they're actually in love but that's honestly actually what it feels like when we're playing live i remember there was a moment at the knockout um the last time the last time we played with february of 2020 and um it was just we were groove we were all i felt i never once felt panicked or rushed i was able to just kind of like I felt like I was in the middle of a fucking whirlwind and I just, I took a full breath and could think faster than I've ever thought before. You know what I mean? It was fucking awesome. Um, and I don't know if that's what you guys kind of experienced too, but it's it's a, kind of an outer body thing and it's, it's very special. But I agree. I think that's why I'm afraid to ever play with other musicians because like that's a very private thing <laughs> what i'm yeah. describing you know yeah. it's kind it of is. an intimate thing but yeah <laughs> i that's I, a oh go ahead andrew no i was just gonna say that it's, it's a beautiful sentiment because it's very true i feel i feel the same way i i also agree with you on your number one joey because that is my number one too man oh hey there we go performing live y'all uh, you said it really well, man. It, I do have that. I do have that feeling of an out of body experience, and yeah, we have those moments where yeah, someone messes up. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> like, but yeah, it, it's a. Uh, it's probably one of the. I mean, when you think about music and just people performing, like you know, of course we listen. You know, our daily lives, we listen to music and on you know our way to work or whatever, and. You know, you love it when bands release their new albums, but initially it's seeing the band live. And, you know, I think 
playing in a band is obviously a, a whole nother experience. And, um, you know, I still love seeing going to see bands because it gives you that feeling the music's so loud. Um, you know, the, the venue and the environment, like where you're playing is a whole nother topic in itself and thing. Um, you know, the sound checks and like, you know, just the whole, like the whole process. And I used to be super freaking nervous, um, before like shows all the time. Cause you're like thinking like, you know, are you gonna mess up the song or whatever? But there's always that moment where like, it's time to go on and you play You start playing the first song and you're like, you have that moment, right? Joey, where you kind of take a breath and you're just like, holy shit. It's like, this is so much fun. And it, and it, you know what, what I think is kind of the, uh, I don't know what the right word to say, but this, the kind of sad part about it is like, yeah, it goes so fast, man. Cause you, you, you have so much fun playing and performing and, you know, going through the songs and, you know, you, you could have rehearsed the songs. We, you know, we, we did practices before shows and like, you know, trying to get a set list down. That's actually probably one. I, I don't know why I don't have that on my list is like writing a set list together and like trying yeah. to figure out what we're going to play and everything. And, um, seeing you know how we can kind of shape the the night with our with our songs and stuff so it, it's a whole it's a whole feeling and i guess joey going back to like playing with other musicians like i think you're right like i have played with other i've jammed with other people i've played in other bands but there's something obviously with the long history of blind issues there's something about us four playing that just does not skim the surface of any of uh, any of the other people i play with um you know and i think it's uh i think that's also a special thing for for uh, if you're in a band and how long you've known each other and how long you've been performing and, and writing songs together, I think it, it adds so much more of a layer to the band itself. And, you know, we have that with blind issues as we've been playing for, you know, so many years together and we know our the you know, songs we've written. Like, uh, I mean, I could try to remember most of the songs we've written because we've written a lot of songs too. Yeah. So it's uh yeah, and then performing is again, you know, I, I can't wait to play more shows, you know, uh, we had this kind of thing where we're playing, you know, a few shows in San Francisco before the pandemic and, you know, even just seeing, just playing those shows was so much fun, you know, and, and being able to like get back to, you know, playing and, and enjoying performing together. So yeah, nah. that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Is it, is this the 20 year anniversary? Oh my God. Is this, is this? Holy shit. So where do we start? 2002 2002 do we, do we need to do like a uh well, West, West I, remember, I remember yeah uh, well i remember it's we we formed the band because of 9 11 we were like there's no way oh, like osama bin laden's gonna keep us down so like we're forming a band we're gonna take him down otherwise pop punk and otherwise so, like, the terrorists went yeah exactly so 2001 radicalized us and then in 2002 <laughs> we became a band <laughs> And I was like, hold on, I can't play guitar yet. I'll join yeah. next year. <laughs> That's part of the training montage. Is what... <laughs> oh, man. Well, we'll have to do something for sure. Yeah. Uh, Damn. We, yeah. Uh, holy shit, d- 20 years. We should We should do it. We should see if OLM will let us play in their, their oh. basement for like a 20-year anniversary. Fuck, that'd be so fucking cool because that feels like home base it does it, it does. really We're gonna does play for all like the uh base. the current kids at all yeah <laughs> yeah well at least their parents at their parents, parents probably went to school with us yeah yeah oh my gosh that reminds me of yeah. uh i was gonna say that reminds me of a story of uh when we used to play shows not it wasn't the talent show but i think we played like a few shows underneath the you know the in the church hall or whatever yeah and I think I don't know if it was like the year it got like remodeled or something, but we had Onslaught, Danny Rodriguez's metal band, and we had Soundcheck, and they were like you know hardcore, you know they were fucking hardcore metal band, and they were sound checking, and I think like mass was going on upstairs while it was happening, so you're just hearing like, just <laughs> deep, oh my god, dude. But hey, we got again, we created some good friend, you know, Danny Rodriguez, yeah, he's still a good friend of ours, and. You know, we've had him on the show and like going back to like one of my top, you know, it's like meeting other people through it um, is, is such mm-hmm. a great thing. But yeah, that, I thought I just remembered the the church hall, man. I haven't been back to OLM in a minute. So, dude, I haven't. Been, yeah, it's been I a, drive by it every now and then, but I haven't been. I walked in when I my first week of my separation. I was just like, all right, bud, 
<laughs> what, been here in a while. Me, guy? Yeah. Fuck, dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I took a my took a hit of my vape pen. I felt really guilty, and I walked out, and I haven't been back. Um, <laughs> but hey, maybe they'll let us do it. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Just look, just be back there. I would love that. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe I'd be if, very into that. Yeah. I think it'd be fitting to do like we'll we'll ask like the the Columbini brothers if they can like get Operation Hooligan back going together. Ooh. We'll ask Element or Parkway Fifty Five or Fifty One yeah, to come like... back. And um, what was it with uh, Pterodon? We'll ask Pterodon, Pterodon to come back. Dude. Pterodon, their November so trials, good. whatever November they were. Tri- yeah, yeah. They so good. Um, yeah. They still play. There's they. Uh, What's the band they're, they're in again? You, so I... it's called Hard Girls. Hard and girls. it's okay. Yeah, it's on. Uh, they're on Asian Man Records, I believe. They're it's a they're a great band. Hard um, girls. Okay. Yeah, and uh, there's actually they play. So that band has the one of the guitar players for Shinobu, which was like a San Jose band that was like playing around the same time we were playing around. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, anyway, so the that guitar player is also in Hard Girls, and he's also in. Uh, the Jeff Rosenstock band, which is like a, a, a newer, more contemporary, like touring band. That's great. They're playing up in uh, San Francisco on the 19th and I will be going to that. And if um, anybody's hey. out there, out there listening, come by and see me um, get sweaty and probably like dislocate my knee or something. But uh, <laughs> where's that going to be at a great American music hall? I think. Nice. Possibly, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had to buy it. So they, they sold out super quick. I had to buy them secondhand, um, so they're probably like thirty percent above what I would have paid. But oh okay. yeah, doesn't matter. That's cool though. Yeah. Like, yo, I used to play with that dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, that's rad. That's really yeah. cool. Man, I want to go to a concert good... with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go to a concert. I, I just uh, I just went and saw fucking um, St. Francis and the Wolf play. Ah. Down um, over off of Kearney. Mm-hmm. Kearney, Kearney, mm-hmm. and the Fight Eye. They're playing yeah. a lot of. Um, it was an outdoor show. Like they play a lot of. It outdoor was outdoor. They had to. Yeah, they had to stop because it started to rain. Um, oh man! But it was. They were great. I was like, play Super Toy, and they did. And um, I, I really like their album. Like not even like blowing smoke. Like I, I really do enjoy their fucking album. It sounds good. Um, but yeah, it was they're they're always you know Alberto. Ah! He was like, <laughs> "You guys, the song sounded great. I was worried you guys were gonna kind of like you know during the pandemic." I was like, "Nah." It's like awesome. So yeah, um, anytime they're playing, I, I love to go see yeah. them too. They're great. They're a good band. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stage presence there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 But, yes. Yeah. Um. How are we feeling, gents? Do we want to go for another list? Or are we are we feeling good? What are, what's the consensus here? Your show, up to you. Um, do you want to like you want to power through them? You want to just go like five five five? We could do five five five. Cool. Five five five. That sounds good cool. to me. All I'm right. going to I'm going to make the executive decision here because I'm the guest and uh, listen to me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do I'm going to do. So actually, if you want to intro it, you should intro it. But I'm gonna. I want to do do mine first. So I don't. I don't it. take. I know I have a lot of good choices. I want to make sure they're not taken by you folks before. Um, okay. We get into it. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is a a companion piece list uh, to band and music and all that stuff. What are your top five favorite music documentaries, Andrew? So my top five music documentaries, all very real movies, all very real documentaries. So coming in at number coming in at number five, Tenacious D, The Pick of Destiny, um, <laughs> by far my favorite yes. duo acoustic duo documentary. Uh, <laughs> coming in at number four, Back to the Future. That is a documentary about uh, Chuck and Marvin Barry, the Barry brothers, Barry cousins. <laughs> Um, not a lot of people know about it. Not a lot of people talk about it, but it is a music documentary. Um, number three is School of Rock. School um, of Rock. <laughs> it's actually a documentary about a- a Ned Schneebly, um, yeah. which gets taken over by uh, Jack Black <laughs> and his um, ruckus crew of young children. Uh, at number, what was that? That was three. At number two, 
Rockstar, uh, the Mark <laughs> Wahlberg vehicle Rockstar, another great music documentary, very real music documentary. Steel Dragon, uh, love Rockstar. Steel Dragon, Steel Dragon, great dude. soundtrack. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was talking with with Annie earlier, and uh, we were talking about how the 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 adolescent boners that we would get from from Rockstar, <laughs> it being yeah. on. Uh, <laughs> it would be, be on VH1. And... Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, they would dance to that uh, Ted Nugent song. Yes, yes. Um, I know yeah, exactly you know, what you're yeah, talking you, about. Oof, yeah, yep. great, great mm-hmm. adolescent movie. Um, sure. That's number two in in my music documentaries. Number one in my very real music documentary movies is Airheads, the Steve Buscemi, Adam yeah. Sandler vehicle, Brendan that's Fraser right. as well, um, Chris Farley in it as well. Very real music documentary. Um, so again, the list, number five, Tenacious D, number four, Back to the Future, number three, School of Rock, number two, Rockstar, number one, Airheads, all very real music documentaries. Thank you. That's a fantastic list. Oh, man. <laughs> I know we're not going to be able to beat any yeah. of those, but we can, we can, we can try. <laughs> Shawnee. Shawnee, give me your give me your top oh five God, music documentaries. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna just spit them all out. Number five, uh, Joe Strummer, "The Future Is Unwritten." It's about the life and the yeah the life of Joe Strummer from the Clash and how you know his how he got into the Clash and his life outside of the Clash as well. Uh, number four, the Defiant Ones. Shawnee, Shawnee oh. real quick, I'm just gonna yeah. ask you to to ease off the mic just a little bit. I don't know if, if that's happening to anyone else. Maybe it's just because I'm I've got sorry. my AirPods in. But I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> well, yeah. it's just excited. very excited. Very excited. Yeah. All right. This it's one hot. is <laughs> it's hot. a hot mic. Uh this one is the Defiant Ones. Uh number four, that's uh Dr. Dre. Pretty and much. kind of a kind of a straight out of the Compton like or comp yeah, kind of a um NWA type documentary. Um, number three, it might get loud. Uh, it's got uh, Jimmy Page, uh, Jack White, and U2's Edge. Great. Uh, they all sit down and just talk about music and guitar playing and stuff. So that's super cool. Um, and I think they jam out like in the movie. They jam out in the movie and they talk about like their influences and lives and stuff. Super cool. Uh, number two, uh, the Sound City documentary about the famous Sound City recording studio. Um, yeah. it's kind of paired a little bit with, uh, Dave Grohl and him. Um, is that the same documentary? I'm thinking, of, I don't know if I'm thinking of the same documentary. I think he yeah, take, and that's, takes yeah, the knee right. board. He yeah. Takes, he buys the yes, board. He buys yeah. the mixing yeah. board that was there. It's a very famous, uh, Neve console. And, uh, I think they recorded a lot of bands in that studio, uh, including with Dave Grohl, uh, you know, Nirvana. Um, I mean, any band you could kind of think of, I think is recorded there. Um, Arctic Monkeys, or, you know, we're big fans of Arctic Monkeys. Um, anyways, great documentary. Uh, and it just shows, like, how studios were just, like, a big hub for a lot of the great music uh, back in the day. So, uh, Sound City. And then, number one, I got Standing on the Shadows of Motown, which is uh, a great documentary because it talks about the uh, backing band of all the Motown hits and songs. And I think it's the Funk Brothers is, like, the, the true band, I think, behind it. And it's incredible because it, it really shows you how um, how uh, important this band was to creating a lot of these grooves and songs and creating the Motown sound because um, a lot of those those uh, songs uh, from those artists at the time had all the had this band behind them and they created kind of the heartbeat of, of a lot of those great hits from Motown and it uh, it just shows you there's a lot of a lot of people behind collaborative efforts a lot of people behind. Of the music and um, still one of my favorite docs. So there you go. Hell yeah! Great yeah, you, you've mentioned that before. I I still haven't checked that out. And every time you'd say it, I'm like, damn, that sounds it, so good. It's so cool because they also, I think, when they filmed that documentary, they had like a performance. They got everyone together, and so they interlaced oh, cool. the documentary with them performing all together. Wow. And you know, they're a little, obviously a little bit older now, but they're just again, you just hear those songs, you're like, oh my god, the. The, these Motown songs, this band was behind all of those songs, all those recordings. Um, it's it's almost incredible to see like how many t- how many songs they've all played and 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 either contributed to the composition and writing and stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's such a good doc. There Hell you. yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, Joey, what are your top fives? 
Number five, I'm going to go with The Last Waltz about the the band's final performance on Thanksgiving Day in San Francisco and like tons of musicians come out and jam with them, including like Dylan and stuff. It's wow. very cool. Scorsese directs them. Um, number four, The Clash, West Way to the World. I don't love The Clash. Um, number three, Bob Dylan in Don't Look Back. Um, this is the famous That's one where we get to... Uh, I don't need Time Magazine. I've never been in Time Magazine. Um, so you get all that. You asked the Beatles that question? <laughs> how, how can I answer that if you've got the nerve to ask me? Um, that's my favorite. I can't wait till I think to use that when someone asks me something. How can I answer that if you've got the nerve to ask me? That's my favorite <laughs> fucking thing. Someday I'll remember to say that back someone. <laughs> uh, Number two, end of the century, story of the Ramones. And uh, number one, the whole reason that I even dug this list back up is because uh, Get Back, the Peter Jackson Beatles documentary on Disney, I watched it over the holiday weekend. Um, and honestly, everything that we talked about in our last list about being in a band is so fucking well portrayed um you know it's a long one and if you're not a hardcore beatles fan i suggest just watching the last two episodes but there's still a lot of great stuff in the first episode it's just a little more meandering um but it's i've never seen such a um uh, a complete portrait of the creative process and working through it with other people and especially like when when your bandmates are at different energy levels than you are and like you know one person wants to go this way the other person wants to go this way when come on let's go for let's go one two three more times until we get it right let's fucking take a break you know what i mean like there's there's that but there's all the laughs there's so many um john lennon is fucking hilarious i was laughing my ass off the entire time almost um paul mccartney is you, he's he's a mad genius um Ringo's fucking hilarious um George you know George is what you want him to be he's you know the quiet one so why don't you shut the fuck up but um <laughs> it's I honestly if you don't like the, <clears throat> if you don't like the Beatles that's fine but if you have been in a band and have experienced any part of that life whether it's in the studio or just trying to write together uh you owe it to yourself to watch this documentary it's very very good i i'm so excited that it's that we have this um it's three parts and it's like almost nine hours long but it's so fucking good um nice there gotta we go. check it out it's fire it's yeah yeah well, I, I mean yours was very good oh yeah yeah the best one andrew <laughs> i made a i made a mockery of your show That's i i haven't thing. i haven't thought about air airheads in so long it's such a good movie it is and i think i've only seen it on like comedy central or vh1 i don't know if i've or ever like seen mtv it. sometimes yeah. Yeah. i don't think yeah. i've ever seen it without commercials <laughs> yeah. yeah same yeah <laughs> yeah it's a very good flick well, well there we go um any any fun little things that we'd like to uh share whether we're watching or anything from our daily lives that we'd like to share with our dear sweet lovely imaginary audience uh i've been watching succession that's a good show you should watch succession if you don't there we go gotta catch up it's <laughs> yeah. good jonathan uh check out no time to die all like right interesting james bond film there you go i will Joey. what would you give it out of five uh it's not my favorite james bond film so i'm gonna go but i think it was watchable and you know it was a good james bond flick so i'm gonna go four out of five four out of okay you're so generous i am i am but it's you last, are it's the last one Dude, daniel craig i don't know <laughs> Objectivity. That's that's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got Marty, or at least we got Marty, a Furbo. I don't know if you've seen this. Yeah. Yes. This? So it's a little device. It's a little camera um, that spits out treats. What? So, for instance, at work today, 
on my lunch break, I was sitting on a bench in San Mateo and I turned on the app and I could see our front room and then I can just toss a treat. Can we see? Yeah. No, we can't really. I yeah, there, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. right okay. there. All right, I'm I'm shooting a treat. Is it, oh, you see Marty move? I see movement. Yep. Like, what is that? <laughs> Sometimes I gotta throw more than one. He doesn't trust it right away. <laughs> His interest is peaked. There, there he, he goes. goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. That's great. <laughs> so it's we we've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, there you go. That's, That's, my, cool. That's my share time. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me on, guys. Dude, thank you for coming thank you, on. Andrew, yeah. Where uh, where can the dear imaginary audience find more of your your work on the internet? Uh, you can follow me on all social media platforms: um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and TikTok at Thug Thrifty. Hell yeah! <laughs> Jonathan, where can we find more of your work on the internet this week? Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram at Sean Day Music and on my website, SeanDayMusic.net. Anything coming up for you, Joey? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, <laughs> damn it. Uh, you, <laughs> you can find me on, <laughs> on Twitter and on Instagram at Joey Prodi and on my website, JoeyProdi.com. You can check out the show at Top 5 Pod. It's T-O-P-F-I-V-E 5 P-O-D on Instagram, on Twitter at gmail.com. Facebook at Top 5 Podcast. We're on Apple Music, Google Play, SoundCloud, Anchor, Spotify, all that good stuff. And on YouTube. So please give us a watch. But first, give us a like, give, give us a listen, give us a follow, give us your love. And Jonathan, we will give you... Blind Issues just says all the love the world. Blind Issues. Yeah. From Blind Issues. From, from Blind Issues to you. Until next time, I'm Joey Brody. I'm Sean Day. I am Andrew Hopkins. Thanks Thanks for for listening. listening.